In our previous presentation, we understood the time complexity. Now, in this presentation, we will understand the space complexity. So, let's get started and let's see what are the topics of this lecture. The first topic of this lecture is Priori versus Posteriori Analysis Recap. In this lecture also, we will get a quick recap of Priori versus Posteriori Analysis. It is important to get the quick recap of priori versus posteriori analysis to properly understand the space complexity. After getting the quick recap, we will then understand the space complexity. And finally, through an example, we will properly understand how to find the space complexity of a specific algorithm. So, these are all the topics of this lecture. Let's get started and let's get the quick recap of priori versus posteriori analysis. Here is the quick recap. In case of priori analysis, we estimate time and memory space required by an algorithm before executing it on the system. And in case of posteriori analysis, we calculate time and memory space required by an algorithm after executing it on the system. We are interested in priori analysis because it is the most straightforward, the easiest and the most practical analysis available. In this type of analysis, we estimate time and memory space. We learned in the last lecture, what is the meaning of estimation of time? The estimation of time is same as the estimation of number of CPU computations. And the estimation of memory space is same as the estimation of main memory space. We do estimate the main memory space because CPU interacts with main memory space directly in order to execute an algorithm. So, we are concerned about estimating the main memory space required by an algorithm before executing it on the system. Now, how do we estimate main memory space? That's the main question. In this lecture, we will understand how to estimate the main memory space required by an algorithm. Before understanding through an example how to estimate the main memory space required by an algorithm, let's first understand the meaning of space complexity. So, now let's move to the next topic where we will understand the space complexity. So, what is the space complexity? Space complexity is the estimation of main memory space required to execute an algorithm. So, space complexity is the estimation of main memory space. And how do we estimate main memory space? Or how do we find the space complexity of an algorithm? Space complexity of an algorithm is equal to the space required to store the source code plus the space required for simple variables plus space required for the data structures used plus space required for stack for recursive algorithms. So, these are all the parameters and we need to add these parameters in order to calculate the space complexity of an algorithm. Now, out of these parameters, the first two are not so important to find the space complexity of an algorithm. We will not consider these two parameters. The reason is that space required to store the source code and the space required for simple variables are constants. And just like time complexity, we do not bother about constants in space complexity as well. We learned that while finding the time complexity, we eliminate the constants. Similarly, in case of space complexity also, we eliminate the constants. So, we should not worry about these two parameters. What about the last two? We should worry about them because the space for the data structures used and space required for stack for recursive algorithms, these two are not constants. Their memory space requirement may vary. Space for the data structures used depends upon the number of elements stored in them. And space required for stack for recursive algorithms depends upon how many times a function is called. 
So these are the two parameters we should worry about in order to find the space complexity of an algorithm. In this lecture, we will discuss an example algorithm which is not a recursive algorithm. It will be an iterative algorithm. A recursive algorithm is an algorithm which calls itself within its own body. We will not discuss a recursive algorithm, hence we will not consider this parameter as well. Because according to this parameter, we should estimate the space required for stack for recursive algorithms. As the algorithm which we will discuss is not a recursive algorithm, therefore this parameter is not a concern for us. So right now, in order to calculate the space complexity of an iterative algorithm, we just need to focus on estimating the space required by the data structures used in that algorithm. So now, let's understand how to estimate the main memory space or in other words, how to find the space complexity of an iterative algorithm through an example. So now, we will discuss an example algorithm to properly understand how to estimate the main memory space. Here is the algorithm. We already saw this algorithm in our previous presentation. This algorithm is capable of calculating the sum of n elements of a list. The list in this algorithm is A and n represents the size of this list. Now we know in order to find the space complexity of an algorithm, we need to consider these factors space required to store the source code and space required for simple variables are constant. Therefore, we will not consider these two factors. This is the source code and the space required to store the source code is constant. Similarly, the space required for simple variables is also constant. In this source code, we have three simple variables, n, sum and i. The space required to store these variables is constant. So we will not consider these two factors. What about the last factor, space required for stack for recursive algorithms? This algorithm is not recursive. This is an iterative algorithm as it involves a loop. Also, we can observe that this algorithm is not recursive because this algorithm is not calling itself within its own body. So we will not consider this factor as well. What about this factor, space for the data structures used? We are using this data structure A. This represents the list of n elements. So the space required for this data structure is of concern to us. So the space complexity of this algorithm depends upon this data structure. This is the only data structure used in this algorithm. How much space does it need? Let us assume that each element of this list takes one unit of memory space. Then, as it contains n elements, therefore, the amount of space it takes will be n units. And therefore, the space complexity of this algorithm is big O of n. Why big O of n? Because there are n elements in this list and we are assuming that each element takes one unit of memory space. Hence, n elements of this data structure will take n units of memory space. So clearly, the space complexity is big O of n. So with this, we understood how to find the space complexity of an algorithm. As we have understood how to find the space complexity of an algorithm, we are done with this topic. And this means we are done with this lecture. Okay friends, this is it for now. Thank you for watching this presentation. I will see you in the next one.